Hey guys, it's Roboy here. It's been nearly a year since the last release of MS Paint IDE, and I was and still am absolutely blown away about how many people it reached and how much support it got. Since then, nearly the only thing I've been working on is the IDE, developing an accurate OCR from scratch, bringing the speed up literally hundreds of times from before, as well as adding new languages and reworking most of the internals. There's a ton of new features, and literally everything is on the wiki, so check the description if you want help with anything. And without further ado, here's a little demo video of the IDE showing off a few new things. This video isn't going to be a full-blown tutorial on the IDE, that's what the wiki's for, but I figured I'll show how to, sh like, just show the installation process of actually getting the IDE in case anyone just wanted to get started. So first you can just go to the downloads page and then click the latest release to the installer button. And I have it downloaded right here. It's the 3.0 beta, but it should be released by the time you see this. You can just double click this and give it admin firms. And then it'll ask you where you want to install it, just the defaults are best. And then there's three options, the context menu, the file extension, readme. It's best if those are just all checks, so you can get all the features. And then just keep going next. Is that a desktop shortcut? And there we go, it's done right here. And now, uh, once you first launch the IDE, it'll probably tell you about this, and basically you need an LSP for it. And this is just gonna be a Java demo, so we can just click Java. And then you do want to install the uh, Java language server by Eclipse. It does take about 94 megabytes. Just click yes. You can also click the website button for more info on it. And once that finishes downloading a little bit, you'll just see the welcome to MS Paint IDE window and just create a new project. It can just be called demo. And you can just make a new folder in here called demo for our project to be in. And it's gonna be in Java. And there we go. Here's the IDE. All right, so I just have an open project right now with default settings. And I'm just gonna be showing how easy it is to actually make a project run in the IDE. Now we just have the main class that we're just gonna be running right here. You can just change this to this normal text field. And to make a class, just go to File, New, Image File. So of course it's an image. And it's gonna be a package com example main just going to be called at main.java.png. Now the Java is very important because it signifies to both the IDE, the LSP, and everything else what file it would be if it wasn't a PNG. So we can save right here. There are some debug messages in the IDE, but we can ignore those for now since they will be gone before the release. And now you can just open up the text tool, text tool and just write a normal program. So I'll go right to that. Now we just finish this class, and as you can see, it's just gonna be relying on another class called stuff, and the argument is just hello here. So we can close out of that, and you can already see that stuff can't be resolved, and there's just a diagnostics tab right here, and you can just see on line three, it just can't be found. And this is just the Eclipse's uh, Java LSP that's working on this, and every time you just change a class, it'll automatically update. So you can create another class from here, and just gonna be stuff.java.png. And I'm just gonna be writing the code for this class now. All right, so I just finished this right here, and it's just gonna be making a pop-up message saying argument is hello, since that was the argument. So you can close out of that. You can already see diagnostics are empty for both of those. And same with the tab right here. And to run it, make sure you have execute program and compile program on. And I'll show syntax highlighted later. Just click start. And it says argument is hello right here. And that's literally it. You can just start again. And then there's also the stop button as well, which just stops a program. Now running a program and everything is pretty simple. I mean, as far as the depth of what the IDE goes to, 
but it's really not that impressive. So say you just open up your files right here and you really want to change hello but you might want to change all instances of hello or you're just too lazy to open up paint because it's just too bothersome for you. So as with all IDEs, there's a replace function. So you can just close that there and go to edit and replace. There's going to be replacing in the file. You can also replace in all your files, just everything in the project or in a directory. We're going to be replacing hello and it already shows on line four of main.java.png. You can see hello there. We can actually just make this a bit bigger so you can see it in real time right here. And we're going to be replacing with good if I can actually spell goodbye. So we can just click it and click replace. And there is and there we go. So in around 100 milliseconds, it just replaced that. So we can just cancel out of that. And if we start again, the argument is goodbye. It's just as simple as that. Another feature that all modern IDEs, including MS Paint IDE, of course, has is syntax highlighting. So to access this, you can just go to your project and in the highlight folder, everything's already highlighted for you. You can see keyword strings and everything. You can create your own highlighters with Antler and then just have it compile. And this also works with the diagnostics. So if we just open up a file right here, you can either also open it with paint, or just right click, edit with MS Paint IDE. And say we forget about a semicolon, which can be a common problem for people. If we close that, we can immediately go in our highlight folder. And it shows us right here some angry schools saying that it's not there. And of course, it's in our diagnostics. We need to insert the semicolon right here. And that's pretty much it. It works with any kind of error. You can also specify in the settings, I believe, how, well, like what level of errors you want. So like warning, etc. And that's pretty much it for highlighting. It works with all languages implemented, and it's fairly easy to add your own highlighting. The last feature I'm going to be showing you guys in this video is the Edit with MS Paint IDE button in the context menu. So I showed this a little bit in the last section. You can right click the image, edit with MS Paint IDE, but this really isn't exciting. This just opens up paint. You can just go to open with paint or just change the default opening uh, program. When it really gets interesting is if you just create a text file and you can write whatever you want in here. It's a normal text file, obviously. If you right click a text document and click edit with MS Paint IDE, it shows you the text contents here. And you can edit this like a normal text file. So I can type in here, never mind, or whatever your heart desires. Just save that. And you open it up, it edits the text file for you. So you can edit literally any file you want. This is a normal just paint instance. You can edit longer sentences. You can do new lines or anything. If Notepad could just reload, you'd see it. It usually happens in a couple milliseconds. So I believe around 170 milliseconds for most things, it's sometimes shorter. And that's basically that. So I'll probably be posting more videos about the IDE, more links to everything, as I said earlier, will be in the description. And see you guys later, see you in the next release.